Guys, it's been a hot minute since I've done a review and I decided to do a review pretty much on the hottest day in Cape Town this year. Now, the reason I'm saying this is because I apologize if I start to sweat. I do have a little fan blowing on me, so if it doesn't appear with mic, I apologize, but otherwise I'd be sitting here in a pool. But what are we doing today? We're doing the 7600X. Now, you may be saying, hmm, that's a little bit late, but there's a reason I decided to delay it, and that's because I wanted to see what the reaction was gonna be from AMD in the advent of Intel's launch of the 13th gen. Now, with that being said, do note that this review is gonna be a little bit more fair towards AMD, but we do have to keep in mind, always at the back of our head, what the launch prices on AMD versus the launch prices on Intel were or was. While conducting my tests, the results seemed almost predetermined in my head, but I still have to go through the motions of actually going through the review, and you'll understand what I mean now. But there's quite a few factors to take into account, and one of those factors is that AMD on this launch decided to go with a whole new architecture. Basically, everything's been changed, the chipset's been changed, the socket's been changed, you can only do DDR5, you have to go with AM5, so in certain cases it's going to be in a different cooler. So we will address this towards the end of the review when we go to the conclusion, but again, just hold that in your mind as we jump through this. Now, because we know pretty much all the benchmarks of everything, just for the record, I do want to state everything that this test was done on. So for starters, let's go over the specs of the 7600X. First of all, it's a six core, 12 thread processor. Now in this generation, we still don't see the adoption like Intel of e-cores, but again, we'll get to that. The clocks go from four to seven to 5.3. Note it can go higher on overclock because the CPU can be overclocked, but immediately we're seeing a big generational leap from the older series in the actual core clock speeds. Looking at the caches, the L1 cache is at 384 kilobits, the L2 cache at six megabytes and the L3 cache at 32 megabytes. Now I do want to put a big, big MD here. Noting the small caches of the CPU and actually the entire series is something that was a little bit surprising to me, especially with the whole V cache excitement that we saw on the 5800X 3D. So it was very surprising for me for AMD to release this without actually increasing the L3 caches on their CPUs. Default TDP is at 105 watts. Note that it does use Windows power management, but this is a nice low TDP, so we do have good power consumption coming from the CPU. Now, one side note that we didn't have in previous generations on the X series is that this does have an iGPU or dedicated GPU. So if you do want to install or not have a graphics card on install, or if you're not planning to have a graphics card, you can actually just run the CPU and then plug that into the display port or the HDMI on your motherboard, depending on what you have. Now, let's jump straight into the performance that I marked. Now, for the purposes of the review, the CPU obviously was a 7600 X, the motherboard was an MSI X670P Pro Wi-Fi. RAM we had Crucial 16 gigabytes at 4800 megahertz, two of those. We had a Crucial P5 Plus 500 gig, an Antec Signature Platinum 1000 watt. That was to make sure that we had no wattage issues. GPU, we had a gain with RTX 3080 Ti. For cooling, we used a 360 mil AIO, which was an MSI Core Liquid V2. And the actual bench was the Cooler Master Master Frame. Starting off with Cinebench on multi-core performance, higher being better, the 7600X got a 14985 on my test bench, which was actually lower than CPU Monkey's 15315, but it is a negligible difference and it could be attributed to VRMs on the motherboard, but I digress. We can see a huge increase from the 5600X of a 10988. However, the huge towers coming in next to it are the 13600 and the 13600KF, having scores of 24525 respectively. And then looking at the far right on the 12600K, 17660. So definitely dominating on the multi-core performance here is Intel. Single core performance, again, starting far left, we got a 1932 on CPU Monkey, they got a 1976. Again, a huge single core performance boost coming in from the 5600X of 1593, but very, very close. And this is why a lot of people said that Intel is the gaming king again. They got the highest single core performance on the 13600K and the K. 
KF of 2026 with just the result of the 12600K being there for reference of a 1918. Now we'll move on to Blender. Starting off on the far left, we got a 220.84, which is higher than the median average of 217.45. Now we can see on the 5600X of 157.23, which kind of advocates a result that we saw on the multi-core performance of Cinebench. So definitely a lot stronger performance coming out of multi-core. Again, we have massive towers coming in next to that, the 13600K getting a 331.43 and the 13600KF getting a 323.51. And then for reference, we do have the 12600K at 239.05. Moving on to 3 d Mark CPU Bench, I will have more comparative scores coming out in the future, but I just wanted to have this here for reference. Now to avoid any confusion that may be there, just note that there is a max thread, 16 thread, 8 thread, 4 thread, 3, 2, 1. But because the 7600X has 12 threads, we will see the max thread and the 16 thread scores being the same. So that came in at 7192 and the 8 came in at 5944 and we see the results, but this doesn't really mean anything. It's just here for future purposes. On to Geekbench 5, multi-core performance. We see that the 7600X got 11080 and the sample from the 5600X got a 7981. Now this is just confirming what we've seen from all the previous results. The 13600K sample coming in at 15200, the KF coming in at 15122, and then we have the 12600K there for reference. So again, being dominated on multi-core performance. Single core performance, a little bit more forgiving for the 7600X coming in at 2129, 5600 having a 1594, a lot higher result than previously. We have the 13600K at 1999, the KF at 1993, and the 12600K at 1868. Now I've just thrown some of the gaming benchmarks so that you will be able to have them in front of you for when you do want to see, but we tested Assassin's Creed Ultra with the 3080 Ti and we can see relatively good scores coming out at 1080p, 1440p and 2160. But it seems that 1440p is going to be the staple diet for gaming as all the architecture is leaning towards 1440p. And we'll see the same thing in Formula One where we can see that the 1440p was really pretty similar. Obviously we did have a different average being lowered from 216 to 165 but the maxes were creeping in the same alignment we did have more of a minimum frame buffer which i did find a little bit weird where the minimum frames was 165 as opposed to 142 on the 1080 but then on 2160 we can see the results therefore halving but again just an affirmation of gaming moving towards a 1440p as the benchmark far cry 6 further complementing the 1440p we had good average results of 103 versus 96. The max and mins were there and thereabouts, but we did have a good score on the 4K of having an average of 85, but still 96 on 1440, pretty, pretty solid. Last but not least, Rainbow Six Siege with Ultra, and this was more to test the actual upper frames of the CPU, but again, we see 522 for an average on 1080 and 464 on 1440, with a massive drop in 2160 or 4K at 291. Again, this affirmation comes in that 1440p seems to be the way for the future of gaming. Onto the statistics on the CPU for testing. Cinebench came in at a 92.4 maximum with an average of 89.9. For ADA CPU and FPU benching, we had an 88.8 .8 and 86.7 respectively. Blender did also hit quite high on 91.5 and then the average being 87. Geekbench a little bit more forgiving on an 84.3 with an average of a 61.4, but this is to be expected because it's testing different zones. And then on the 3D, Mark CPU, we had a 90.4 with a 51.2. And again, we would expect that because there is drops where the CPU is not using all cores. And then on 3D Mark Extreme, we had a 90.5 with a 52.4. Onto Power Draw, and pretty much the most impressive thing for me during this whole review was just how lean the Power Draws on the 7600X were in conjunction with its performance. Cinebench 115, Ada 103, Blender 110, Geekbench 5 107. 3D Mark CPU 96 and 3D Mark Extreme 88, but that's obviously going to be a lot more GPU dependent. 
frequencies pretty standard across the board of the maxes that we hit 5450 being across the board for everything except ADA which did a 5425. On to price the MSRP right now is around about 5300 to 5400 Rand I'll put the dollar price up here now team blues equivalent is 7000 Rand now that is for the 13600k I don't think that the difference is big enough to justify the performance difference in Intel's favor however there is a good price difference that you can take advantage of the one thing that I do want to note is that when AMD did release this new series it was considerably higher in price only when Intel released 13th gen did we see in two three weeks the massive price drops this suggests that AMD was either overpricing in the beginning or that they hemorrhaging at the moment in order to keep the value proposition level Further to this, I think that AMD is sandbagging, and I say this for two reasons. One, the performance was great from the 5000 series to the 7000 series, but I was expecting a little bit more from a 7 nanometer architecture to a 5 nanometer architecture. The second reason that I say that is because on the last release, just before we saw the 7000, we had the 5800X3D, which absolutely blew the minds of gamers all over the world and is still used in a lot of benchmarks today. I actually use one myself for gaming. Now, if this technology was so great, why wasn't it incorporated from the start? This means for me that we are going to see in the future these versions being released, which could have actually been a lot better had it been released from the start and AMD had actually waited for this release. Now, one negative that a lot of people have mentioned was the fact that AMD has said, no, nope, straight to DDR5, new socket set, AM4, no, AM5, and no DDR4. And I think that this was the best move possible. Instead of floundering around the DDR4, instead of trying to get everything kind of weighted around, AMD had made a solid decision and saying, we are moving to the latest technology. Yes, DDR5 may not be as good as DDR4 in gaming performance, but we've seen major leaps coming in the last two, three months. The pricing is starting to fix. So while this may have been a little bit early for AMD to launch, I think it would have been best to launch in February of 2023. We would have seen a lot more receptive of a pickup from this new series than we would have in the beginning. So with regards to the fact that they haven't done DDR4, I don't think this is a bad thing because what it would mean is that you would have had to get the new CPU, then you would have had to get a new motherboard at some stage, then new RAM, etc, etc, rather than just doing everything at one shot. So well done to AMD from my side for actually just sticking it out and saying we're going straight to the newer tech. Including, if you're currently on AM4, it's a very difficult call to make, but my call would be to wait. Now, the reason I say this is because we can't just look at a CPU in terms of it just needs to do this or just needs to do this. We are in an age where a lot of people need to see you to be able to game and stream at the same time they want to be able to be on discord they want to be able to do a plethora of things at the same time and this is where multi-core performance comes in to boot now the peak or e-core ratios that we've seen coming out of team blue are a very good value proposition for this especially that we are running so many different applications at the same time now i don't think that amd is taking this sitting down i think that they're buying their time and when they do come out with a new release it's going to absolutely blow our minds because it again it's always a game of who can one up the next and we've already seen this with the 7900 XT and XTXs that have come out from AMD who are already giving Nvidia a run for their money as we saw from Linus who changed his personal GPU from an Nvidia to the 7900 XTX. Now I'm still staying on the 5800 X3D at least for a while but I do look forward to seeing what AMD is going to do in the future. Guys I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed the content don't forget to give that old subscribe button a big old hit. Look forward to seeing you in the next video. Cheers. Goodbye.